This is the number three pickleball player in the world, Tyson McGuffin. He shares the biggest dinking mistake that he sees all the time, as well as three specific things that you can do to overcome it. The average pickleball game takes anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. The average amount of shots per rally at the amateur level is in between four and seven shots, while the average amount of shots at the professional level is between 11 and 14 per rally. So what is the big dinking mistake? That is that you are popping the ball up way too often when you are dinking. You get right into a dinking exchange with your opponent and within the first one or two or even three shots, you're popping that ball slightly high and then they're taking that ball out of the air, usually putting the ball away, when this really just shouldn't be happening. And so I'm gonna be helping you guys to be able to overcome this problem by following these specific steps from Tyson McGuffin himself. The first thing that Tyson suggests doing is being in their correct grip. And you wanna make sure that you're holding a continental grip or handshake grip. So simply all that you do is you put your paddle out in front of you and then you're just gonna grab onto it, just like this. So making sure that the Edges of your paddle are facing upwards, right? We're not holding it flat like this. Edges are facing upwards, we grab on. Now we're in a uh, continental grip or handshake grip or hammer grip, has tons of different names. Um, the original name is continental, so that's why I'm using continental today. But the way that you find it is just like that, and just so I can show you guys what it looks like here. If I come down the frame of my paddle, right, the outside edge, this is bevel number one. If I go one bevel over, this way, this is bevel number two. I'm going to put my index knuckle on bevel number two, grab onto my paddle just like that. That's continental grip. Should feel extremely awkward for you, but that's good, okay? After you hit a few hundred, it won't feel awkward anymore and you'll be like, why wasn't I doing this before? But so many people don't make it to hitting the few hundred because they're like, oh no, I'm really comfortable with, with my grip that looks like this, right? And all that I do is I hit four hands on both sides. People have been doing this in all paddle sports for many, many years. So it's the exact grip that you wanna be holding as you're up dinking at the kitchen. The reason for that is because it's gonna allow for your paddle to be in the right position and at the right angle every single time that you're dinking. Whereas if it's over here, frying pan grip, which is the most common that you'll see with people, it's extremely difficult to get a ball that goes over here to your back end. So someone dinks it over there and you're trying to lift it like this or you're lifting like this, you have an open paddle face and an open paddle face is never good because that means the ball is going to shoot up. And that's why we see that so often that people are popping up the ball and it typically will come down to them just having to make that simple grip change into the continental grip. This is the pickleball bag and paddle that I use. I absolutely love both of them. I think that the bag is extremely roomy. You can hold up to 12 paddles in it actually. So it's absolutely awesome. If you guys are in need of a bag or a paddle, you guys can use code ADV-PLAYBOOK. I earn a few bucks anytime someone purchases through that code. So if you'd like to help support the channel and are in need of some pickleball gear, the link will be in the description of this video. The number two thing, according to this expert in the game, Tyson McGuffin, that causes pop-ups is people will change the angle of their arm as they're swinging through the shot. So if I'm hitting a back ending, this is kind of what it looks like that you'll see on the amateur level or even beginner level, is players will reach back to hit their dink and maybe they have a straight arm, but then as they're hitting through it, that arm bends. Or they'll start with a bent arm, as they hit, it straightens out. You're adding on an unnecessary movement, and it's gonna make your timing extremely difficult. So your timing's gonna be off if you add anything that you don't need. So it's not bad to have a straight arm, and it's not bad to have a bent arm, but what's bad is if you unbend or bend as you're hitting the shot. So what do you want to do? What that comes down to is the height of the ball. If the ball is slightly high, obviously we need to have a bent arm. So the ball is slightly high, I have a bent arm, and I'm hitting through my shot. Notice how my arm stays bent. It might unbent, unbend slightly throughout my stroke, but that doesn't matter because my timing's still gonna be good because maybe it's moving, you know, a centimeter or two, or maybe even an inch. My timing's still gonna be good. The problem is, is if I start bent and I finish straight, and it literally moves a foot throughout that bent motion, your timing is going to be totally off. You'll typically end up grabbing the ball 
and popping it up a lot. So if you have a grabbing problem where you you hold onto the ball and it hits your paddle a hundred times, it's because you're doing that bend and unbend motion. So make sure that it's staying bent. The way that I like to think about it is one of those things at the amusement parks, I don't know what they're called, but they look like a, it's a ship typically. Tons of people sit in them, they face each other. I think they face each other. I've never been in one because it would make me absolutely sick. But they seesaw back and forth just like this. So if, if you're picturing that, hopefully you are. That's what you want to treat your shoulder as, is it's the hinge to that thing. So as I'm hitting through my dink, my shoulder is just simply hinging towards where I want to go, okay? So it's creating that seesaw motion. If you fail to do that, your arm will automatically compensate and unbend as you hit through your shot. So focus on having it as a hinge. You'll be totally shocked at how much your consistency goes up and how much less you pop up the ball. Okay, that brings us to problem number three which is that you're too wristy with it, okay? Typically players, as they're hitting through their shots, whether it's a backhand or a forehand dink, they'll wrist it. They'll start with their paddle kind of facing towards the net, and then it finishes with it facing towards the sky after they've hit their motion. Adding on that extra movement or any extra movement is never going to be helpful. And the best way to, to stop doing that is to lock your wrist, but I'll go over that in just a second. If you guys go and watch, especially beginner players, a lot of the time, they'll actually have this big, huge wrist movement. So why is that bad? It's because your timing's going to be off and also where you're wanting to go is where you should finish towards. You shouldn't be finishing towards the sky. I like to act like the tip of my paddle is where I'm aiming. So when I hit my shot, if I'm aiming now towards where I wanted to go with the tip of my paddle, I've done a good job at hitting that shot. AJ Kohler once said to my brother who took lessons from him, AJ is a, a professional pickleball player. He's I wanna say he's top five or six in the world um, in pickleball. He taught my brother this and showed him how he was using way too much wrist with his dinks. And so then my brother went to locking his wrist and hitting these dinks. And my brother's like, I feel really stupid right now. I feel dumb, which is how you guys will feel when you lock your wrist. But you know what AJ said to him? He said, well, that's good because pickleball is a dumb game. And I think that's really true. We need to dumb it down. Pickleball is a dumb game. It's a dumb sport, right? It's also an awesome sport. But we need to dumb it down and really simplify everything. The more simple we can keep it, if we don't have huge back, back swings, if we're not overextending our arms, if we're not using our wrists, and we're just keeping everything locked and concise, our timing's gonna be a lot better, and we're gonna be a ton more consistent at not popping the ball up over and over and over again. So the way that we lock our wrist is we wanna act like a straight line is going through our forearm all the way through our wrist, okay? We're not locking our wrist wrist this way, not our wrist. We're not locking it this way and we're not locking it this way. We're just locking it straight through where we wanna go as if we could draw a line through there. So now that you know the three things that you need to be doing to not pop up the ball, there are also three strategies that every amateur player is not doing that they need to be doing in order to take their game to the next level. And you can watch that video right here.